Hey, tubers and fellow toy train lovers. I forgot about two years ago. <laughs> a friend of mine found this uh, 50, uh, 8652 Santa Fe War Bonnet F unit at a yard sale. And uh, I featured it two years ago and just showed it running around the track and it's an MPC model it was uh, made in 76 to 77 and uh, he got it for 35 bucks because it wasn't running and the guy wanted 40 and I paid the guy who brought it over here a very good friend an extra five bucks and he's he sat down and watched me uh, get it running. Basically, I just had to clean it up and clean the contacts, and give it a little lube and oil. But then I set it underneath the layout and forgot all about it. But I did uh, have him check with the guy who did the yard sale and to see if they had a uh, matching dummy A and he found it he, I guess he was clearing out some old storage buildings and he found it and gave me a call and but by then he he thought he had me by the you know what's and so he he said would you pay forty dollars and I said sure because this is worth about 250 uh, It's got a little wear. They're $500 in excellent condition. It's got a little wear on the, on the nose decal. But it's that otherwise doesn't have a scratch on it. So I'm guessing it's probably the combined it's worth or for around three or three hundred bucks or something like that, but it doesn't matter to me what trains are worth. If if I like them, I like to run them. And if they're too expensive, that you want to put them on a shelf and you're afraid to run them, that those aren't the kind of trains I want to have. I want to have fun with mine. But I did promise that I'd run it around the track and pull an actual train. So I got one of my, I think it's my only scale boxcar. Pretty doggone heavy. It's a uh, K-Line. And Southern Pacific, as you can obviously see. And it's Apache Trails. And it says it twice. And you can see an Apache um, Native American standing at the bottom. And the uh, buttes of like Utah and Arizona up above. But if it seems a little difficult to see, it's because I think you can see it now on this camera. It's a pretty good camera. It's uh, because it's all supposed to be boards. And so it's painted on these boards. And you can see the texture. But boy, this is a heavy car. It even has a uh, little, I should, I'm not sure if I call it a box car. It's actually a reefer. It actually, op these actually open up. If I can get my fingers in here. There you go. Now, I'll, I've take it off and see how it closes. 
we'll waste time with it now. But it's a beautiful, beautiful car. But kind of large for my layout, but one that I saw in the catalog probably 15 years ago and um, picked it up at a train show about a year ago and put it away and haven't had it out since. And I'm also pulling a Rutland. which is a rail sounds car. I think it had an SP, I can't remember what it was, shell, and I changed it to Rutland because I like the shell, but it's got rail sounds inside it, and the door doesn't want to open, and I'm not going to force it because it's Probably got wires up against it. It's got a lot of electronics inside there. And one of my favorites, my aquarium car. And which is working. My chicken car. My Western Pacific. Lionel car and just a uh, regular right old Lionel SP style caboose. I don't know if someone else uh, is running backwards and I'm not sure somebody uh, the previous owner put the uh, coupler on the replace the coupler put it on the wrong way or came that way from the factory it wouldn't surprise me but we're gonna run this around a couple times I'm gonna show you what it looks like inside and compare it to some other cars some other uh, engines locomotives This takes a lot of um, volts to pull this heavy train, particularly with these heavier cars. So you see the fish are moving faster. <laughs> they generally do. You also see the CW80 is turned up quite high. Take it around the one more time and let's see if I can remove this shell but my shaking shaky hands derailing it come on this has two spring clips at the back and a single Phillips screw that comes up through the frame to secure it. There we go. So, there's not much in there, is there? There's a really nice Pullmore motor and it, uh, as I mentioned on my film two years ago, this big open area where you can get in there and clean it out which is what I would have normally done and had it. this not been an older train and I want to check for dried grease down by the uh, worm gear and there was 
So I got all the dried grease out of there and, and took this motor out and put it in fresh grease. And surprised that in 76 and 77, they were still using um, the old style reversing switches or lockouts, I should call them. You can see the coil in there. But otherwise, this is the only, other than the light bulb, there's not much to it. But it runs really good, runs very quiet. Uh, which I've mentioned before, and I think that's because it has uh, fiber gears on the wheels running against, uh, linked up to the metal gears in the uh, uh, motor. And what I wanted to show is I I noticed this used a lot of power to pull this train, which is a heavy train. So I pulled my old uh, 2023 UP out of, out of storage. And I'm going to see if I can set this on top of there and give you an idea of this difference in the sizes. That's about, I'd say two and a half inches longer, the uh, F unit over my old 2023 Alco. My 2023 Alco had absolutely no problem pulling this train because it's uh, magnet traction up front. So, in fact, in fact, I would say it pulled it better than the uh, 8652. And this is a Mike's Train House F unit. And there, this is about 15 years old. And it's Proto 1. And look at the difference in the size of the shells. Come on, if I can get this to stand up there. There we go. I can really see <laughs> how small these little uh, Mike Train House F units are. And I love, I am not a Mike Train House uh, collector. This was a gift. And this is actually, besides my little Mickey Mouse reversing rail car, uh, this is the only uh, Mike's train ha Mike train house item I have so uh, and it's been good I've only uh, I've replaced the batteries for the memory and you have to remember to charge them at least every six months if you're not running it and uh, Look at all that, all those electronics <laughs> compared to the light at all. <laughs> but what you got is two can motors here. And you'll see it's barely moving. With this can motor the top and here's here's your battery for your memory they're selling another product 25 bucks that uh, replaces a battery and supposedly you never have to replace a battery I did once uh, have a chip I call it a chip 
uh, that I that they sent me as a replacement when I had uh, it was a factory recall and the original owner who had this had hands that were a lot shakier than mine and since I'd worked with electronics I uh, replaced the chip for him and it worked fine so I hear a lot of people do or don't like Mike, Mike Train House next to Lionel. I'm a traditional guy. I like my older trains. You'll see all my Mark's pre-war trains up here. No, they don't run as good as the Mike Train House or the or some of these. Uh, fantastic old Lionels from the uh, post-war years but they sure are a lot uh, more unusual and, and I'd say just more beautiful the, the old Marx trains but now you've got a good comparison and you know why I don't run my only F unit on my layout, it's really too big. But I think that's about all. Let me show you a top view of the shell. The lockout switch is on the bottom on this side. So you can actually reach underneath it and uh, change it to reverse only or forward only or t to forward and reverse only. I believe it's a two position uh, switch. I didn't bother to check it, check it before I run it because I usually set my lockout switches in forward only. So thank you for watching. Uh, sorry that it's been a while. I hope to have something ready if it comes in the mail and do a little show here of some interesting engines, locomotives and trains. And what I'm going to do is I've got one Texas special shell for this already it it looks gorgeous on it and uh, I've got another one in the mail for the uh, dummy unit and then I'll put my two line L uh, I think it's two there are two ten and two eleven on the tracks and we'll run three trains at once maybe even the rodents so thank you for watching and bye bye